What's up guys, welcome back to another Revit video. In this video, we're looking at creating a PBR or physically based rendered material really quick. We're trying to do this fast. It's, it's maybe you see an image online and you wanna make this material really quick and need it for a quick presentation. This is something that I've done in the past. I have other ways of making materials now, but if you're a beginner especially and you're just not getting into making materials in Revit, this is a really quick way to again quickly make material that's high quality it's got the physical properties that are available with us in 2020 especially and to, it just makes a really good looking material really quickly if at any point in this video you happen to learn something or you just happen to like it please demolish that like button helps me out so much also consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing that also helps me out very much so let's get right into it i'm in just a blank template Revit 2020 project, nothing special here. I've got a generic floor that we're gonna to use to put our material on to look at it later. But we first needed to, let's at least set up our material. So I'm gonna to go to materials here and we've got all of our list of materials and in previous videos I've covered this but this orange triangle here at the bottom left is telling me that it's a legacy material meaning that I don't have the ability to use the physically based properties in the appearance tab here in with this particular material asset I need to change this out so I'm gonna first make this new material and I'm probably gonna use some sort of concrete material so I'm just gonna call this concrete for this and again you can see that I've got that legacy material or that legacy asset warning basically so let's go ahead and trade this out I can hit replace asset I'm gonna go up to uh, appearance library and I can just start scrolling down and we'll eventually see something that does not have one of these until we start to see these, this will work. We've got just asphalt shingles. That works. Let's go ahead and replace that material. And here we can see that we have, of course, now it looks like asphalt shingles, but we'll replace all of that. But we have all of these advanced highlights and advanced parameters that we can deal with, which tells me, yes, this is now a, a physically based rendered material. I do not have my legacy warning there and then we're good to go. So I'm just going to leave this up here, but I'm going to go and move over to the internet where I've got our textures, where maybe you're just scrolling along and you see, okay, I need this particular texture. This is where I go for really quick, seamless textures. And it's just textures.com. It used to be called CG textures, but let's say we want a concrete. The nice thing about this website is once I get in here, maybe we want a floor, is that once you get all the way down, you can specifically type in and select show seamless textures only, which means you're only working with seamless textures. You don't have to go through the process, which can be quite tedious, of actually making it seamless yourself. There's plenty of other videos out there to show you how to make a seamless material within Photoshop. It's not particularly hard, it's just very tedious. So maybe we want, we'll, we can scroll down here, and maybe we want something like this. You know, this it really any of these will work because they're seamless materials, but we want something with a little more definition. So maybe we go with something like this. Unfortunately, you're gonna to have to log in if you want anything more than just the smallest size, but I have I have never gone through anything and never paid for anything, so I'm always using these free, small, usually 1024 by 1024 sized images, and they work just fine. There's really nothing special that we need to go through there. But I'll place this in the folder here. And again, the names don't really matter, but now we're gonna go actually to Photoshop. So I'm gonna open this file and so I've got my file right there. There's my concrete. I'll hit open. And as soon as this opens, we can start to change. And, and really, we're trying to extract new kinds of maps. So if you remember in Revit, we've got multiple kinds of maps. And you, know, you can just place this on, but it's going to look extremely flat. There's not going to be much definition. There's not going to be a lot of detail to it. So a lot of things that I like to do, starting off with materials, it's just look at the size. So a lot of times... You know, this won't have a big impact on anything, and if anything else, it might just increase the image size. But, you know, I kind of like um, 2048 as the size, which is basically just doubling the size of my texture. Um, I like putting this at 150. Again, of course, that's going to change the size, so we're going to have to put this back down. So I like this, again, at 10, uh, 2048. That's fine. That'll work. I'm doubling the size, essentially, so now I've got a little more definition in that regard. So I will save this out ultimately again as just the base color. So really what we're working with here is this is 
this, if we're talking about the quick materials, this image can serve as our base color or our diffuse map or just that base layer. But if you're working within, I think, any Photoshop after uh, CC, so like any any uh, Creative Cloud Photoshop, you're going to have this option. And you'll know that if you have the option, if we're going to come down to Filter and 3D, if you see Filter and 3D, that means you're using a, a new enough version of Photoshop, and I think that's after CS6. So in 3D, you can see here how this can be very helpful for us. I can immediately generate a normal map. And if you remember from previous videos on how we put together a PBR material in Revit, we do, we have the option of putting in a basic height map or bump map, but we actually want to use a normal map because of the higher quality and just the type of map that this, that we're able to use. We can use those in Revit now, that's kind of the point. So I can simply click generate normal map. This is gonna take a minute depending on the type of material or the type of image and the size of it. And you'll immediately get this pop-up and <laughs> you can start to see what this is doing for us. We've got our normal map populated in the background but we actually have a lot of different kinds of control here. This is considered a, you know, it's a 3D map and now it's like forming this sphere in 3D. And I'm actually able to zoom around and really see what this is looking like in 3D, which is great. And a lot of times what I can do is I can change some of the detail scale here where you can see some of the detail increase or decrease. You know, I'll put that back to AD because that's, that's really where it was. But, you know, a lot of times I'm, I'm happy enough with putting this at just the default value. All I really need to do is go to Filter 3D, Generate Normal Map, hit OK, and then there we have our normal map. You know, was that easy or what? And so there it is. It looks good. I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I like to use a PNG because PNGs will allow you to have the smallest size of file without losing any quality. They are the the best in that regard. I wouldn't use a JPEG necessarily, but of course you can. It's going to be hard to tell the difference, but you're likely to have a smaller file with a PNG file. So let's call this concrete underscore normal. Okay, great. I'll save that, hit OK. I'm actually going to undo this so we can get back to our base color. And again, I can come back up here to filter 3D and we can do generate bump or height map. And I I'm not necessarily wanting this to be our you know, bump or normal map because we just made the normal map, but I want to use this as our uh, pseudo roughness map. And if you remember from a previous video I've done, a roughness map is basically telling us how rough is the material. <laughs> Obviously that makes sense, but how rough is this? Is it a metal, a, a something that's smooth? Is it, or is it a concrete material where it's pretty rough? In this case, it's a concrete material so it's going to look rough which means we're gonna see a lot more white that means it's more rough and so a lot of times what I want to do here is if I'm trying to create a roughest map knowing that this is a bump or a height map I want to decrease the blur all the way I want this to be a little more sharp and you know honestly again you can take this as far as you want you can look at all the different presets here maybe you want to do some of these hard lights so we can get more uh, more detail and more rough looking material because of the type of material that it is. So that's probably as far as I would take this and I hit okay. And like that is a working roughness map. You know, you can always come into the curves and add curves and change things if you want. But you know, the second you do that, you're messing with the material. It's going to change the way it looks because if you apply this as a roughness material, a roughness map to the material, it will affect things differently. So, then I can, again, do file, save as, and we're just gonna call this concrete roughness. And so we've got our base color, which I need to, again, undo, and I'm just gonna save this again as the base color, so we have a new material, a uh, new file, so again, concrete, and let's call this base color. So that's perfect. Again, we, wanna, we want this to be a PNG. Now with those three files, we can essentially do what we want and we can make our material now. So let's go back to Revit finally and we can actually start replacing some of these materials that we see here. The first thing I'm going to do is, if obviously you can see here our asset is this material that's an asphalt shingle. I don't want that. 
I'm not just going to replace this because if I were to replace this information and all these maps, I'd essentially be changing this asphalt shingle and I maybe I want to keep that. So in the case that you want to keep this, we can simply duplicate it. And so now we can see that zero again. We don't have any other material with it applied. And we see a one, which tells me that this is a copy, but we're going to call this something else. So maybe we call it concrete. Please name things better than I am because that definitely helps because you know, you should name things. Other people will use this. Other people will look at it. Other people might edit it and need to do the same. Nonetheless, it's concrete. So let's go into this material and change this from our basic asphalt to our new material. So we've got our maps here. I'm going to choose base color for this one. I'm going to come into the base color. I want to make sure all these settings look good. This, the size 10 feet works for now. I'm going to go ahead and click link transforms. Hit OK there. We can come into our roughness and do the exact same thing. There's our roughness. We can come in here and make sure that we've got, yes, 10 feet. We can link our transforms. Perfect. Hit OK. And then finally down to our bump map or our normal map. There's our normal map. But the thing I need to do is make sure that I click this, come into here and change this because I think the default is height map in this case. Because this is a normal map, we need to tell Revit that this is a normal map and that we want this to read like a normal map. And as soon as I change that, I have this depth amount at, a, at one. So basically just 100% of the depth that it's showing, it's not amplifying it further. So let's leave it at that. We might change that later. Again, we'll link the transforms, hit okay. And I'm gonna actually remove this map. This is not something you really need to do 90% of the time. Just leave that at white, it's fine. So really, we can start to look at our material and I'm going to go ahead and change this to uh, a cube and we can start to see that, you know, it's not bad. It looks pretty good, but I don't really care what things look like when it comes to the Revit preview. You know, we can put even at this production quality, like, yeah, that looks pretty good. We're getting pretty close, but I really care more what this looks like in Inkscape, for example. So let's launch Inkscape after applying this to our floor and I'll go ahead and put it on a wall too so we can see it on different surfaces and see what it looks like. Okay, so I got my concrete. Let's go ahead and apply this concrete to my floor. And you can actually always just type in the name of the material and assuming you've typed it correctly, it will accept it right there. I'll hit okay. Let's go ahead and make a couple of walls. Just generic walls are fine there and there. Let's go ahead and change the material here to concrete again. Again, this is case sensitive. You can hit okay, there we are. And so now if we look in 3D, we have our walls and our floor and they're all concrete. So let's go ahead and launch Inkscape and see what we're looking at and see how the material is faring. So we've got into Inkscape finally and here we go. We're looking at our material. It seems to look pretty good. Once I zoom in here, obviously we can see there's a, a decent amount of tiling and that is too bad. I think what I might do is go ahead and put the size of the material up to, let's say 20 feet, just to see that, see less tiling. So let's go ahead and do that. Come back into Revit. We'll go back to our materials in the manage tab. 20 feet might be too much if you're looking at it like actually at eye level, but nonetheless, I wanna do this so we can see less tiling. This is a, a great example of a material being seamless while also not exactly being as seamless as you want it to be. So yeah, there we go. We can start to see more of the detail. It looks like concrete. This is a giant floor. So if I come down here, it looks way too big and it's just not quite what we're looking for. But for this kind of a view, it's, it's starting to look pretty good. And you can really see some of the detail that's coming out. And that's all because of that normal map and the roughness map. So we can, again, take this to another level. Maybe we want to jack up the, the roughness. Maybe we want to jack up the normal map and really see some extra definition there. We can easily do that by going back into the material, going into the normal map, and putting this value from 1, and it goes all the way up from 0 to 5. And so this is simply saying I have five times the depth that I was seeing previously. And it's probably going to look a bit ridiculous. And it, it kind of is. It's a little too, little too much. But 
nonetheless, you can really see the definition and the height that's coming out of that normal map and how you know, how useful it is. If you looked at previous videos of mine, you've, you've seen the comparison between older materials and those legacy materials and these new physically based rendered materials and the definition that we get out of these. It, it's just amazing. This would look flat and whereas it does not look flat at all. There's a lot of definition here. So what I'd do probably was ma is make this a smaller wall. I'd probably put this more like a five foot and I might even have to go in to address some of the seamless parts of this just so it doesn't look like it's tiling so badly. Because there is tiling and you're, you're, there's really no way around that for any good material there is tiling but really good materials especially even some other ones on those te that texture website you can really hardly see any of the, the tiles. Now unfortunately with this one it's a bit different so it is kind of a trial and error. Clearly you can see some of the tiles and I think it just has a lot to do with uh, some of the more unique features in that material but there's a lot of definition coming out of this normal map. So this is a very quick, very quick and dirty way of getting the material. All we did was go to textures.com, we found a seamless material, we downloaded that, we opened it in Photoshop, clicked a few buttons to create a normal map and a roughness map. You could even skip the roughness map if you want and you can apply that roughness map globally with the slider between like 0 and 1 or you could even use a color if you want. Again, white being completely rough, black being completely smooth that's up to you but you could really get away with just using the normal map and the base color map and get a really quick material and that's all out of Photoshop so if you have a new Photoshop version you're you're two clicks away from a nice looking normal map so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you learned something if you did please demolish that like button it really helps me out a lot also consider changing the face of that subscribe button to existing that also helps me out so so much and I thank all of you who have if you've stuck around this long you're awesome thank you very much for that Hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.